you know, I think when we truly love something and we really want to do something, we'll find ways to do it. This is the Bold Artist Podcast. You have answers and you're expressing them in your art. Your art is important and it needs to be seen. Welcome, and let's get started with today's episode. Welcome back to the Bold Artist Podcast. I'm pleased to be here today with our guest artist, Arnold Placencia, who is located in Florida, sitting in an art gallery surrounded by his artwork. For those of you who can see it on YouTube, Arnold, we are so happy to have you on the show today. You have quite a unique journey in the arts and a unique story to tell. So can you start out by introducing yourself to all of our watchers and listeners? Yes, absolutely. And first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here and be a part of this growing community of uh, amazing artists. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, you are so welcome. We're thrilled to have you on the show today. Thank you. And so like you mentioned, my name is Arnold Blasencia. Um, I am the visually impaired artist, um, and I live with a condition called Starkart disease, um, which is a form of macular degeneration. Um, what that does is it causes the cells in my macula uh, basically to die off and causes central blindness and, and color blindness. And it's a, it's a progressive disease um, that started when, when I was a child and just has progressed over the years. And, um, and now my, my central vision is completely gone um, and I have a hard time seeing any color. So, um, mm. yeah. And it's remarkable because you are a painter. So how, how does that even work for you, Arnold? How can you see what you're doing? What is your process? Um, there's a few things that kind of go into that. Um, usually when I paint, I, you know, have to kind of set up my, my space and I use a lot of lights, um, light kits, like for photography, I'll have like four set up around me and, you know, just to bring a little bit more light because I am missing a lot of light. Um, so I'll have that. I do have like these little tiny spots of clarity, you know, closer to my peripheral vision that I kind of used to move around the canvas um okay and i paint you know one brush stroke at a time um a lot of it is there's something within me that kind of takes over as well you know i kind of mm. you know i've explained to my my partner it's like when i used to drive when i used to have you know clear vision um you know i'd be driving i'd be thinking of something and you know 30 minutes later i'm home and i'm like oh my god how did i make it home you know, when I was, my mind was right. somewhere else. It's <laughs> almost, automatic pilot mode. <laughs> exactly. It's almost like, it's almost the same thing. It's like something takes over, you know, and moves my hand. So it's, it's a mm -hmm. little combination, of, you know, of all of that. So, mm -hmm. and I, you know, when I do finish a painting, I, you know, step back, I take a photo, I look at it and I'm in shock that, you know, that I'm able to create these, these pieces. Yes. Yes, and the pieces that I'm seeing behind you are very remarkable. And so you're you're excelling so so well with, with the challenge of not being able to see all of what you're doing. And the reason that I asked the previous question about what your process was because um, back in episode 24, I know that you you had a listen. I interviewed. John Bramblett, who is an artist who is 100% blind, right, right, right. and he paints by feel and by touch. And what's unique about you is that you still have these little uh, places of clarity that you're still seeing, but you're using both. You're using your intuition and right. a little eyesight. And so right. it's, a, it's a slightly different story, but how did John's story impact you? Uh, well, um one of the things that it did for me is i've had this fear um you know after my diagnosis i fell into a really really deep depression and i was in that state of mind for about two years you know i didn't leave my house i stayed away from family from friends because i didn't want them to see that you know um 
And when I started painting, um, and I felt this sense of uh, purpose again, and that feeling of feeling alive again, you know, I had that thing in the back of my head, knowing that this is a progressive disease, like, what's going to happen in the future? You know, if it does get to a point where I have absolutely no vision, if that happens, what is that going to mean? You know, am I going to fall into that same place, into that same state of mind? Um, and this interview just opened up my eyes and, you know, made me realize that I'm, I'm going to be okay. He managed to, you know, be able to paint, you know, after losing, you know, his sight completely, you know, mm -hmm. he, um, changed the way he did things. He, you know, found new ways, you know, to be able to paint. And so that gave me hope that I, you know, that I can do the same. And I've kind of done that. I've found ways to even paint with the little vision that I have. And so that's really what it did for me is just give me that hope and that peace of mind that everything will be fine. And, you know, I can continue painting and um, keeping alive that, that sense of purpose. Yes, it warmed my heart greatly to know that the podcast spoke to you on such a deep level and such a, a level of encouragement into your soul. Uh, that is exactly what we want the Bold Artist podcast to be. Right. And so having a guest like John uh, speak out his story of learning to paint blind and then uh, your name came up in the Bold School community amongst our uh, bold school mentors. So some might be familiar with Axel Martinez, who has also been on the show in earlier <laughs> in an earlier podcast. Axel, Axel is well known. He's the one that Sharla and I have often quoted because he's the the one who said on the podcast, "You've got to lose the fear." The fear right. <laughs> so he's famous in bold school for saying, "Lose the fear" when it comes to painting. Anyway, it was uh, your name that Axel mentioned to me, and your story. Uh, you know, came up in our conversations and I knew that I just really wanted to have you on the show to share your story and also how how it had meant a lot to you to hear John's story because it's, to me, it's so beautiful and amazing how all of our stories weave together. Right. And together it's making a beautiful picture of encouragement and um, helping each other move forward in our journeys. And so we're so thankful that you're here and willing to share about it. So what do you feel is next for you, Arnold, in this journey um, regarding your eyesight and your art? Um, I really don't know what's next. I'm, I'm excited for you know, what's to come. Um, actually, one, one thing, one exciting new thing that um, just happened, there was a gentleman that uh, came to my, my opening event um, he is the director of art or healthcare in, at the Lee County uh, Health Systems. Um, mm. He came, he loved my art, he loved the story and, and asked if I was willing to create some pieces um, and have them displayed in most of the hospitals around the county. Wow. Um, so that's, that's, in, that's incredible, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's um, but beyond that, I, I really, I really don't, don't know, you know. Yes, well, all of us are in a state of uncertainty with never knowing what's ahead. We just do um, our days one step in front of the right. other one day at a time. And yet I know that I can sense in you that there's just hope and um, a new kind of vision <laughs> coming <Right>. forward, <laughs> um, the vision of the heart. And so, um, Arnold, how did you come into your art of painting? What was that journey like? And um, what did bold school uh do in that whole part of your process so um like i mentioned earlier i you know after my diagnosis i was and you know before my diagnosis i had lost most of my central vision already but you know because i didn't have an actual diagnosis and i didn't know and nobody could find you know what it was i still had that hope that somebody will find something and they can do some sort of transplant and you know fix everything um mm. But when I got the di diagnosis, you know, I was in that really bad place and I'm extremely lucky to have the people around me that I do, uh, my partner, obviously, um, and also 
Axel. Axel is a very close friend. Um, I've known Axel for six years, and he's always been this. Um, he's always been a teacher and a mentor since I met him before Bold School. And mm -hmm. him and my partner kind of talked, and you know, saw that I was struggling, and you know, and were trying to find ways to kind of help me. Um, during the pandemic, he came across uh, Charlotte and, and Bold School and learned a few things and was excited, you know, to share that with me. Um, and, you know, about a year and a half ago, we once um, some of the restrictions were lifted and people were able to, you know, see each other. Um, we drove to Fort Lauderdale. It's about a two and a half hour drive from where we are. Um, and we went to Axel's and he had easels all set up in his kitchen. <laughs> And he's like, we're like going to paint. most artists, yeah. every artist I know has easels in their kitchen. <laughs> yeah, he was like, we're going to paint. And I just stared at him and I didn't say anything. I was, you know, in my head, I was just like, how in the world am I going to paint? I can't, I can't see. How does he expect me to paint? Mm. And I think he, I think the confusion was very apparent in my face because he's, he said in, his, in Axel's wise words, um, don't focus on what you can no longer do. Focus on what you still can. If you need to mm -hmm. change the way you're used to doing things, simply change them. And that really mm -hmm. resonated with me because I have been doing just that. You know, I've been losing my sight, you know, since, since childhood. And I had to learn uh, to adapt and change things. And so, you know, I sat down right next to him and picked mm -hmm. up the, the brush and you know, three hours later, I was in shock, in shock mm -hmm. of what I um, had created, you know, um, and it was mm -hmm. an overwhelming feeling of, of joy of, I just felt alive again, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel useless, you know, like I needed somebody to hold my hand and guide me in everything I did. This was something that I did on my own. You know, mm -hmm. and that just, I mean, I was smiling for days and it was something I didn't want to, you know, ever go away. I didn't want that feeling to ever go away. And so, you mm -hmm. know, I, I continued to paint. Um, you know, a few weeks later, we went back to Axel's. We did another painting, you know, was super excited about that. And um, he actually took that painting, took a picture and sent it to Charlotte you know, and mm -hmm. kind of mentioned my story and, you know, wanted to share what I had created. Um, and from what he told me, Charlotte was like, he needs to be part of a bold school. We need to get him in here. And sure enough, a mm few -hmm. days later, I was, you know, I was on there taking the boot camp classes and, and, and painting. And so, so that was my journey into, you know, getting into, into bold school and, 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 and painting. That's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that story because I didn't, I, I didn't know any of that. Your name just sort of appeared and I knew, I knew that you were involved in Bold School. But what stands out to me is that I had also watched a news clip that you were on. I, I watched it on YouTube or I had seen you post it. And you told the story of someone inviting you over and right. showing you how to paint. But I didn't know that that person that was, was indeed Axel. Yes. And so the story's all making a lot more sense to me. And it's, you know, it's just really overwhelming and, and makes me happy to know that just even right there in the kitchen of easels, someone can really just encourage and set another person free by handing them a paintbrush and saying you can do it even if you can't see yeah. all the way like that to me is just just simply um what like what a gift yeah. what a gift and so uh thank you axel for yes, stepping out of you. your comfort zone and getting arnold to step out of his comfort zone i think that's what humanity is really all, all about, about like should be about yes. <laughs> and so yeah so then so your journey has really been learning to paint in, has it been the bold school style um, portraits and abstracting colors away from skin tone all the way along? Or what does that whole piece of learning to paint portraits look like for you? It, it has been bold. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't created a whole lot of paintings, you know, there, there's other things going on at home. And so, you know, I maybe did, you know, like eight paintings in the entire year. 
you know, I tried to make as much time as possible. Um, but most of the paintings, a lot of them were commissions. You know, I posted those few uh, first two or three paintings that I did with Axel online and, you know, friends and family, neighbors, you know, kind of saw them and they reach out and say, hey, do you mind doing a painting of me and my daughter or, you know, my dog? And, um, and they all really enjoyed and liked the, the bold colors that I was um, that I was using, you know, in the mm -hmm. paintings that I posted. Um, and so I have, you know, I have been using um, a lot of old colors. Uh, for this particular exhibit, um, I did a little bit of both. Some, you know, I tried to, I was trying to focus more on the, on what I was trying to convey and not so much, not so much on the color. Yes, you know, I did think of color and, you know, but it was more the, the feeling, the emotion that I was trying to convey on, on the canvas that I was more focused on. But there's definitely pieces mm. that, you know, I did I did use um, some old colors. If I could actually use like this one. Um, I don't know if it's... I saw that on the news clip. And for yeah. those listening on audio, Arnold reached back and pulled out a painting we hadn't seen yet. Yeah. And it's, um, I'm going to just attempt to describe it, but I would love Arnold to describe it too. It, it, hands that are clasping like one one is reaching for the other hand and they're holding on to each other one is in monochromatic uh, I want to say black and white but I can't quite tell from what I'm looking at and then the other is in color and so there's just a, it's just a very dynamic piece very gripping yes. <laughs> no pun intended, no pun intended. very yeah. gripping piece <laughs> and so arnold could you take it away and tell us a little like describe for the audience a little more because my vision like when i'm looking through the screen we're we're just on a little split screen next right, to each other yeah. so i'm seeing you smaller and so you can describe it to our listeners right so this is this was a moment um in my journey that I, I wanted to put on canvas, you know, such a special moment. And basically what it is, you know, after my partner and I left uh, the doctor's office after my diagnosis, I really was, you know, feel like my life was over, you know. Mm. Um, but he took my hand and he said, I got you. I will be your eyes. And it was an incredible moment, you know, knowing mm -hmm. that I wasn't alone, that I had this love and this support um so it was something that i it was that moment i wanted to capture and so um this is my hand obviously and it's it is monochromatic it's you know it's, it's gray it's a little cooler gray i you know used a lot more of the teal than than red to create that that specific mm. uh, tone and so i wanted kind of to convey that uh, avoidance of life that i was feeling at that moment, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but with his hand, I wanted color. I wanted to, mm. I wanted to feel alive and, you know, and full of the life that, that, that he, he has. And so that's why I used a lot of, a lot of color on this particular one. So, um, so yeah, that's, um, that was one particular photo that I did use quite a bit of color I was a little bit more bold it wasn't so um you know I didn't use a lot of skin tones on so yes for sure I can definitely see the bold color style coming out in that piece so for any of you who are listening on audio I do encourage you to hop onto Instagram at bold artist podcast and we'll make sure to get that piece that you just showed Arnold into the carousel of your work the art carousel that Thank we show you. when when the show airs and so then uh, everyone who's listening can have a look at the piece that Arnold just described because it is indeed gripping no pun intended <laughs> and so Arnold as you have been going through this journey of losing your eyesight and being in the state of uncertainty. Um, has there been anything that you've learned or discovered that you would want to share with other artists who are either maybe in the same situation that you are or who have always feared losing their sight? And one of the reasons I ask that is because this whole topic um, that led John Bramblett onto the show a few weeks ago came 
to light by Sharla herself sharing on a podcast, which I'm not sure if you heard that episode, but she shared on a podcast with me that one of her fears in life as an artist was to lose her sight. Right, yeah. And it led us to discover John. And meanwhile, you were behind the scenes coming into bold school. (laughs) And so all of these lives and stories are being woven together. Um, And while it's been happening, we've been hearing from the audience some feedback saying that they too have feared losing their eyesight. And it's something that I think visual artists fear. And yet you've been losing your sight all, all along and discovered you're a visual artist. So I feel that you might have something to share with others who are going through it or fear going through it to help liberate them from fear. Yeah, I definitely, I can relate. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it is is a scary, scary thing. Um, But as I mentioned, from watching um, John's video, you know, I think when we truly love something and we really want to do something we'll find ways to do it we'll adapt we'll 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 just we'll just do it you know i had you know i had painted one or two paintings maybe like 20 years ago and they were horrible they were Mm. you know because i was going by what i was seeing i was you know that's basically it and um and i didn't think they were any good so i pushed that aside and moved on but i think um i don't know it's like almost like i said it's something within me that kind of took over um that allowed me um to create these beautiful pieces and i think we just all have to be hopeful and and trust that 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 might you know we'll we'll find a way you you'll find a way mm-hmm. to to do it um if you if you really love Love what if you doing, want to, if you want to, correct. Yeah. Yes. I like what you said there about how as humans, we are resilient and adaptable. And if we want to, we will find a way. And throughout uh, the Bold Artist podcast, I hear from guests, oh, like time and time again, in different words, they will say that nothing can hold you back when you want to. Absolutely. And, and when it comes in terms of painting, of your artistry, if you want to, you will push through the barriers Absolutely. and and that can be whether you are blind, impaired, or if your obstacles are simply inside you. Right. <laughs> if you just have blockages of fear or lack of confidence, because those can be really real and difficult as well. Right. Absolutely. And so it's amazing how resilient we are. And I feel that when you're speaking to um, just being impaired with eyesight, um, you we can still speak into those artists who feel impaired in other ways too, where their fear holds them back, as I mentioned, or um, in last week's episode, we talked about people pleasing. That can be a real stumbling block too, um, fearing what people think of our work. And so all of these barriers, it's such so beautiful to bring out the conversation and say, and have someone like yourself who's really going through, pushing through obstacles, say, you can do this. If you want to do this, you can, you do, can do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And like Axel says, lose the fear. Lose the fear, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I think that'll come up every time that <laughs> Axel's name comes up. Right. <laughs> lose the fear. So in closing... Arnold, is there anything else that you would like to share um, in terms of painting or any other um, words of advice on uh, matters of the heart and pushing forward in our art? Is there anything that's that's still in you to share with us today? Um, I can't really think of anything else (laughs) other than just do what you love. You know, um, Mm. do what makes you happy. We kind of owe it to ourselves to to do the things that are going to make us, you know, better versions of ourselves. So so find what that is and, and simply do it. Simply do it. I love that. 
I can't thank you enough for being here on the Bold Artist Podcast today, Arnold. Your life and story is making a difference. We are so happy that you're pushing through these obstacles and sharing your art with the world. We wish you all the best and hope to follow your journey as it continues to unfold. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And until next time, all of our watchers and listeners, you can find us on the Bold Artist Podcast on Instagram. That's at Bold Artist Podcast. You can find us on the Bold School YouTube channel. Send us a message, leave a comment, and you can find Arnold's links in the show notes. So do check out his work, give him a follow. And until next time, keep creating.